Once upon a time, in the post-war baby boom era, a visionary named Charles P. Lazarus would embark on a journey that would shape the childhoods of generations to come. It was the year 1948 when Lazarus founded Children's Bargain Town in the heart of Washington, D.C., setting the stage for what would later become an iconic chapter in the world of toys and retail. The origins of Toys R Us can be traced back to the aftermath of World War II, a time when the population saw a significant spike with the baby boom. It was against this backdrop that Charles P. Lazarus saw an opportunity. In April 1948, he established Children's Bargain Town, a store that initially offered a range of products for children, including toys, apparel, and baby products. However, it wasn't until June 1957 that the trajectory of the business took a decisive turn. Lazarus, recognizing the potential of a dedicated toy store, launched the first Toys R Us in Rockville, Maryland. This store marked a departure from the previous focus on various children's products, now dedicated solely to the enchanting world of toys. In the early days, the toy retail landscape was evolving, and Toys R Us was at the forefront of this transformation. Charles Lazarus was not only a savvy businessman, but also a visionary in branding. He conceptualized and stylized the Toys R Us logo, incorporating a distinctive backwards R to give it a playful and childlike appearance. This logo would become an enduring symbol of the brand, recognized by children and parents alike. As the store chain grew, so did its influence on the toy industry. Lazarus's vision and strategic decisions propelled Toys R Us into a position of prominence during the 1960s and 1970s. The success of the store was intertwined with the rise of popular culture phenomena, including action figures, dolls, and video games such as Nintendo's Super Mario series. Television played a pivotal role in solidifying Toys R Us as a household name. In 1973, the store introduced its iconic mascot, Jeffrey the Giraffe, in television commercials. Jeffrey became more than just a mascot. He became a beloved character in the eyes of children, even gaming a family of his own. A wife named Gigi, an offspring junior, and baby G. The catchy jingle, featuring its self-identified Toys R Us kid in the early 1980s, further embedded the brand in the hearts of consumers. The impact was profound. By 1990, the business, which had gone public in 1978, had played a pivotal role in transforming a $500 million toy sector in 1950 into a $12 billion industry. Toys R Us, at its peak, offered an astounding 18,000 different toys in 1,450 locations worldwide controlling an impressive 25% of the global toy market. During the store's height, everyone seemed to be a Toys R Us kid. However, with any success story, challenges and changes were on the horizon. Parents, at some point, began to express concern about oversaturating their children with toys. Despite these concerns, the store continued to thrive. According to some, Toys R Us was never the problem. It was an essential part of the joy of childhood. Yet, all good things must come to an end. In nearly half a century of selling toys to enthrall children, Charles Lazarus stepped down as CEO in 1994. His departure marked a significant shift for the company, signaling changes that would shape its destiny. In May 2000, the board of directors appointed John Ellier as CEO, hoping to usher in a new era for Toys R Us. Ellier devised a strategy to rebuild and relaunch the chain, proposing to divide its toy and infant businesses, citing market difficulties, especially competition from retail giants like Walmart and Target. A pivotal moment came on March 17, 2005, when a consortium comprising Bain Capital Partners LLC, Kohlberg Kravis Roberts, and Vornado Realty Trust announced a $6.6 .6 billion leveraged acquisition of Toys R Us. This move, which took the company private, aimed to reshape its future. By July 1, 2005, the company's stock had soared to $26.75, marking a 63% increase from the time it was first disclosed that it was for sale. Following the buyout, Toys R Us became a privately held company, with its financing agreements requiring continued filling with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The journey, however, was not without its hurdles. Toys R Us faced various obstacles over the years, including the rise of e-commerce, evolving toy tastes, and a changing retail landscape. The stores themselves were becoming increasingly out of date, struggling to adapt to a new era of online shopping. Despite these challenges, 
The most significant blow came when Toys R Us shifted its focus from being a haven for toys to prioritizing price cuts in a bid to compete with retail giants like Walmart and the emerging force of Amazon. The once magical experience of walking into a Toys R Us store filled with a vast array of toys began to wane. They failed because they ceased to love toys, as observed by some industry experts. In December 2013, as a last-ditch effort to boost sales, Toys R Us announced that their stores in the United States would be open for a staggering 87 hours straight, eight days before Christmas. The flagship location in Times Square remained open 24 hours a day from December 1st to 24th, catering to the seasonal demand that accounted for over 40% of the company's sales. The struggle continued, and in 2014, Toys R Us unveiled its true transformation strategy, aiming to address fundamental issues affecting future growth. Efforts including decluttering stores, enhancing the customer experience, implementing clear pricing strategies, and tighter integration of retail and online business. The concept of the Toy Lab, a new store format that offered interactive exhibits and opportunities for visitors to try out new toys, was introduced in Freehold, New Jersey in 2015. However, the challenges persisted, and on September 18, 2017, Toys R Us Incorporated filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The move was seen as a strategic decision to deal with a staggering $5 billion in long-term debt. The company had not turned a profit since 2013, reporting a net loss of $164 million in the fiscal quarter ended April 29, 2017. The debt service of $400 million annually restricted investments in in-store renovations, hindering the company's ability to compete with the likes of Amazon and Walmart. While the retail apocalypse was cited as a factor, experts pointed out that significant increase in debt occurred during the period when the company was owned by private equity. In September 2017, the corporation was reported to have a total workforce of 64,000 people. Initially, it was announced that only the United States and Canada operations would be affected, and the brick and mortar stores along with online sales platforms would remain open. However, the reality of the situation set in, and as part of its restructuring, the firm announced in January 2018 that it would be liquidate and close up to 182 of its shops in the United States. On February 28, 2018, it was reported that the corporation was considering keeping its stronger Canadian operations and selling some of its corporate-owned outlets to franchises, leaving roughly 200 in a smaller chain. However, Toys R Us Incorporated later declared that all of its stores in the United States would close. Toys R Us was granted bankruptcy court authority to liquidate its stores on March 15, 2018. This led to a wave of liquidation sales marking the end of an era. On March 29th, the chain's online store closed, directing users to information on the liquidation and closures. Amidst the liquidation chaos, potential buyers expressed interest in purchasing clusters of stores to serve as showrooms, along with acquiring the chain's name and intellectual property. MGA Entertainment had offered to buy the Canadian operations with CEO Isaac Larian planning to raise $200 million through investments and public crowdfunding to purchase at least 400 locations in the United States. The attempts, however, were in vain. After 70 years in business, Toys R Us permanently closed all of its remaining U.S. facilities on June 29, 2018. The closure marked the end of an era, leaving a void in the hearts of nostalgic customers who had grown up as Toys R Us kids. In early July 2018, a glimmer of hope emerged when it was announced that an unnamed benefactor had purchased all of the remaining stock at two North Carolina outlets. The absence of Toys R Us during the 2018 Christmas season constituted a US $4 billion piece of toy sales, creating an opportunity for other retailers to step in and fill the gap. Party supply company, Party City, capitalized on the closures by opening temporary pop-up stores under the Toy City name, strategically filling gaps left by Toys R Us locations. On October 1st, 2018, the company filed for bankruptcy once again. However, this time, there was a twist. The controlling lender planned to revitalize the business behind the Toys R Us and Baby R Us brand names. The firm presented plans for a preliminary endeavor known as Jeffrey's Toy Box, a wholesale store within a store idea. 
The business aimed to execute this concept in time for the holiday shopping season. The plan was to resurrect the Toys R Us and Babies R Us brands, bringing a sense of nostalgia to consumers. Kroger, a major supermarket chain, announced in November 2018 that it would introduce toy displays under the Jeffrey Toy Box brand to some of its locations, selling Toys R Us private labeled products. Jeffrey LLC, an intellectual property holding entity under Toys R Us would manage the brand. The journey of Toys R Us took another turn as the company emerged from bankruptcy on January 20th, 2019 under the new name True Kids. The rebranding signaled a fresh start and the company expressed its commitment to rekindling the magic of Toys R Us. As of June 21st, 2019, True Kids planned to open new 10,000 square foot locations in the United States. These stores, roughly one third the size of the big box brand that closed in 2018, represented a strategic move to adapt to changing consumer preferences and market dynamics. The first physical manifestation of the comeback occurred on November 27, 2019, when Toys R Us opened a retail location at Westfield Garden State Plaza in Paramount, New Jersey. The reopening was met with a mix of excitement and curiosity, as consumers wondered if the beloved brand could recapture the enchantment of its heyday. On December 7, 2019, a second restaurant opened in Houston, Texas, in the Galleria further marking the company's efforts to diversifying its offerings and engage with consumers beyond traditional retail. The revival of the brand extended to the online realm as well. On October 8, 2019, the Items R Us website was relaunched, with a focus on tools and videos prompting popular items. The site, created in collaboration with Target, directed users to Target.com to place orders. However, this collaboration had a shelf life as the agreement expired in 2020, and Amazon took over as the site's fulfillment partner. The road to recovery was not without challenges. The only two US stores reopened in 2021 faced financial losses exacerbated by the COVID-19 outbreak. The Houston facility announced its closure on January 15, 2021. While the Paramus location would close on January 26, 2021, the company strategically decided to pivot its shop approach hunting for new stores and platforms with higher traffic. On March 15, 2021, WHB Global announced the acquisition of a controlling interest in True Kids, the parent company of the Toys R Us, Babies R Us, and Jeffrey the Giraffe brands. WHP, a brand management firm, would take on the responsibility of managing the True Kids business and guiding its progress in the future. WHB had ambitious plans for the Toys R Us brand, they expressed their intention to open Toys R Us stores in North America. The exact number of outlets they planned to open remained undetermined, but WHP received support in the form of $350 million equity commitment from Oak Tree Capital Management Funds. The much anticipated reopening took place on August 7, 2022, as Toys R Us opened new stores in nine states, California, Georgia, New Jersey, Illinois, Nevada, Louisiana, New York, Maryland, and Missouri. These stores, ranging in sizes from 1,000 to 10,000 square feet, were strategically placed within Macy's stores. The move was a departure from the traditional big box model, aligning with the trend towards smaller, more agile retail spaces. By October 15, 2022, the business aimed to have a store in every Macy's site in the United States, just in time for the holiday season. The reopening was met with a mix of nostalgia and curiosity, as consumers wondered if the revived brand could recapture the magic that made Toys R Us a beloved part of their childhoods. On September 29, 2023, they announced their intention to open 24 additional physical stores in the United States. These stores would be standalone establishments signaling a commitment to re-establishing Toys R Us as a prominent player in the retail landscape. Additionally, WHP revealed plans to open smaller outlets in airports and on cruise ships, recognizing the potential of tapping into diverse consumer segments. So there you have it. The incredible journey from the joyous beginnings to the heart-wrenching end. Toys R Us may no longer be with us, but its memory lives on in the hearts of those who grew up surrounded by its magic. What are your fondest memories of Toys R Us? Share them in the comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more nostalgic journeys down memory lane. Until next time, peace.